Today is Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. Welcome to today's daily prayers. Our theme this week is the Church of the Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may perfectly love you and faithfully follow you today and always. In the name and spirit of Christ, amen. Our Psalm reading this week is selected verses from Psalm 107. Give thanks to true life, because God is good. Because God's faithful love lasts forever. That's what those who are redeemed by true life say. The ones God redeemed from the power of their enemies. The ones God gathered from various countries, from east and west, north and south. Some of the redeemed had been sitting in darkness and deep gloom. They were prisoners suffering in chains because they had disobeyed God's instructions and rejected the Most High's plans. So God humbled them with hard work. They stumbled, and there was no one to help them. So they cried out to true life in their distress, and God saved them from their desperate circumstances. God brought them out from the darkness and deep gloom. God shattered their chains. Let them thank true life for God's faithful love and God's wondrous works for all people. Because God has shattered bronze doors and split iron bars in two. Some of the redeemed were fools because of their sinful ways. They suffered because of their wickedness. They had absolutely no appetite for food. They had arrived at death's gates. So they cried out to true life in their distress, and God saved them from their desperate circumstances. God gave the order and healed them. God rescued them from their pit. Let them thank true life for God's faithful love and God's wondrous works for all people. Let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and declare what God has done in songs of joy. God turns rivers into desert, watery springs into thirsty ground fruitful land into unproductive dirt when its inhabitants are wicked. But God can also turn the desert into watery pools, thirsty ground into watery springs where God settles the hungry. They even build a city and live there they plant fields and vineyards and obtain a fruitful harvest. God blesses them and they become many. God won't even let their cattle diminish. But when they do diminish, when they're brought down by oppression, trouble and grief, 
God pours contempt on their leaders, making them wander aimlessly in the wastelands. But God raises the needy from their suffering. God makes their families as numerous as sheep. Those who do right see it and celebrate. But every wicked person shuts their mouth. Whoever is wise will pay attention to these things, carefully considering true life's faithful love. Our daily scripture is Zechariah 4, verses 1 through 10. The messenger speaking with me returned and woke me like one who awakens someone who is asleep. Then he said to me, What do you see? I said, I see a lampstand made entirely of gold. It has a bowl on top. The bowl has seven lamps on top and seven metal pipes for those lamps. It has two olive trees beside the lampstand, one to the right of its bowl and one to the left. I responded to the messenger speaking with me. What are these, sir? The messenger responded to me. Don't you know what these are? I said, no, sir, I don't. He answered me. This is true life's word to Zerubbabel. Neither by power nor by strength, but by my spirit, says true life of heavenly forces. Who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. He will present the capstone to shouts of great gratitude. True life's word came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel laid the foundation of this house and his hands will finish it so that you will know that true life of heavenly forces has sent me to you. Those who despise a time of little things will rejoice when they see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hands. These are the seven eyes of true life, surveying the entire earth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The people of Israel had returned to their homeland after being exiled in Babylon. With the permission of their new ruling government, the Persians, they were rebuilding the temple and would soon be consecrating it. Zerubbabel is their governor and so will be the one to place the capstone upon the completed temple. God is reminding Zerubbabel and all the people that this has been possible only because God's Spirit has been with them. It was not their own power or strength that accomplished it. What is going on in your life right now that is so challenging that you cannot handle it on your own? Take this time to ask for God's Spirit to do what you cannot.
imagine yourself as one of the ancient Israelites. You have returned to the promised land after having been exiled. Perhaps you were born in Babylon to parents who were exiled. You heard their stories of the great and beautiful temple. Now you stand in front of the new temple, built on the ground where the old temple had been destroyed. What emotions might you be feeling? What might you be thinking? Zerubbabel was given a huge task, leading the people of Israel in rebuilding their nation and the temple. He was able to do it because God was with him. What is God asking you to do now that is moving you outside your comfort zone? What do you need from God to make it happen? Our reading today comes from The Church by Hans Kung. The church on its pilgrimage is not deserted or forgotten by God. It is not wandering totally in the dark. Even though it is not the kingdom of God which is to come, it is already under the reign of God which has begun. Though looking forward to the final victory of the reign of God, it can look back to the decisive victory in Jesus the Christ. While still wandering in the shadow of death, it has the resurrection, not only ahead of it, but in its decisive form behind it. In Jesus, the risen, Kyrios. This living Kyrios is with it, remains with it, all days until the consumption of the world, until the coming of the kingdom of God in glory. Until that time, it is under the reign of this Kyrios, the reign of Christ which will also continue until the coming of the reign of God, the reign of Christ, the hidden ruler of the whole world, is already effective in the church, in the preaching of the word, which already has power to forgive sins, to renew humanity, and so to proclaim the consummation of all things, in the giving of baptism, a visible sign and action which makes humanity members of the eschatological community in which the old human is buried in penance and the new human arises in faith to become part of the new creation. In the celebration of the Lord's Supper, which proclaims and represents the eschatological meal of salvation in the glory of the Father, and is shared by the heirs of God's kingdom until the Lord comes again. The church has already been granted the Holy Spirit, if only as a guarantee. So at work in the church, though constantly in jeopardy, is the love which will remain with it and in it always.
Let us pray. God of all power, you promise to be with us in times of trial and struggle. You give us your Holy Spirit to empower us so that we can accomplish far more than we can imagine. Help us to trust you in all things and to depend upon you to help us do what you call us to do. Grant us your power as we seek to overcome the challenges of life in this time, including the challenges of gun violence, climate change, and the deep polarizations that keep us divided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us your strength as we face the effects of these tragic social and environmental tragedies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us your wisdom as, you, as we grow into a people more aligned with your kingdom ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. Be filled with hope, joy, and peace by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.